So last time we talked about this idea of estimating uh, value of x given an observed value of y, and we talked about the maximum a posteriori or map estimate. So um, remember that the map estimate was the value of x that maximized the conditional probability uh, x given y. Okay, and that's really in theory what we want, right? Uh, I want to know, given the full joint distribution of x and y, what is the best x I could choose. Now, in the real world, we talked at the end of the last lesson about um, hard to get this x given y. So what I could do instead would be to do what's called the maximum likelihood, or ML estimate. And sometimes you see this called ML estimation. And that's what I should do. That's like saying maximize the X using the other conditional probability. Okay. Um, and this is something that is usually easier to get in the real world. Okay. So let me just write down um, the idea behind maximum likely estimation, basically saying given the value of Y, um, given the value of y, what value of x is most likely to have produced it? And I know this is a subtle difference between this and um, map estimation. The distinction is a little bit tricky, right? And the distinction lies in the fact that um, for example, suppose that when x equals 2, I have super high probability that y equals 5, right? And so I might conclude with ML estimation that x equals 2 is the best thing to choose, right? But it could be that under the hood, x equals 2 is a very unlikely thing to happen, right? The, the difference between ML and MAP is that MAP is using the underlying PDF, the underlying probabilities of X to find the best decision, whereas ML is kind of assuming that we don't know anything about the prior probabilities of X. So sometimes you hear this called an uninformative prior, or you're agnostic about um, you know the prior, right? Uh, and so let's go back to the examples that we did in the previous lesson about MAP to see how things change when we've got ML, right? So here again is this PDF, uh, I guess it's actually a joint PMF, where I flip the coin three times, X is the number of heads, Y is the position of the first head, this is the joint PDF, right? So now what I want to do is I want to compute the conditional probabilities Y given X. So that's like saying fix X, each of the, each of the rows, and then normalize each row so that every row sums to one, right? And so let me just do that on a separate piece of paper. That's like saying that um, y given x looks like, you know, y is 0, 1, 2, 3, x is 0, 1, 2, 3. So now if I normalize each of these rows, then the first row is like 1, 0, 0, 0. The next row is 0, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, and so on, right? The next row is 0, 2 thirds, 1 third, and the last row is this. Okay? And so now what is maximum likelihood telling me? Again, it's saying I tell you why. So now we're back in the world of fixing a value of y, a column, and then finding the x that produces the largest value in that column, right? So here I have this, here I have this, here again. I have kind of a random toss-up between these, and here I have this, right? I'm just choosing the value of x that gives me the biggest value in the column. And so now I can write down what is the ML estimate of y. Well, I'm just going to go back to this. It's 0 here, it's 3 here, 1 or 2, and then 1. So it's 0 if y equals 0, it's 3 if y equals 1, it's, you know, flip a coin, 1 or 2, if y equals 2, and it's 1 if y equals 3, okay? So let's go back and compare it to the map estimate that we got from the previous lesson. I can see that I got a different number, right? So here, in particular, y equals 1 
Here in the, in the map case, I would estimate two. In the maximum likelihood case, I would estimate three, right? So let's compute the probability of making a mistake using ML, right? So again, I have to go back to my underlying um, probabilities. So I have zero probability of error if I am in the Y equals one case. I have uh, three quarter probability of error if I'm in the Y equals one case. Why is that, right? So I go back and I look at my um, joint PMF. It's like saying, well, I'm choosing this, right? But there's three quarters probability left over here you know, if I rebalance this column to be equal to one, right? It's like saying that this probability of, of x equals three is actually pretty unlikely in the joint case. It's only by normalizing that I kind of made this look so great. But in fact, the value two is much more likely than the value three, right? So that's why I have a higher error for y equals one. And then I have a similar error to before when I'm in the y equals two case, and I'm not going to make an error if I'm in the y equals three case. So now I add up these numbers, I get three eighths plus one eighth plus zero. So I get one half. And so my probability of error is higher for the maximum likely estimate than it is for the map estimate. And that's because I didn't take into account the underlying probabilities of x. Okay. To go back to the other um, situation that we had, which was basically a continuous case, right? So in a Gaussian case, again, if we have a joint Gaussian, the same one from before, zero mean sigma is equal to one, and then some co correlation coefficient rho. So I know that the marginal here is Gaussian with mean rho x and uh, variance um, one minus rho squared, right? And so that is my um, joint PMF looks like this. I'm just writing in the definition. Okay. And now, unlike before, now this is like saying, okay, I need to find the, the X that maximizes this. What is that? This I can't just necessarily read off of it, right? I have to actually take the derivative with respect to x. So I have to take d dx of this and set it equal to zero. What's that going to be? Well, I mean, it's going to be a little bit messy, but the, the operative thing is going to be what happens when I take the derivative up here. It's going to be um, two y minus rho x times a minus rho times e to the whatever, right? Doesn't really matter. Because I'm going to set that equal to zero. The way that that gets set equal to zero is if I choose x to be one over rho times y, right? This is the um, basically maximum likelihood estimate of y. This is like my x hat, right? So this is definitely not the same as the map estimate. The map estimate was rho y. So only when the two Gaussian variables are basically, uh, you know, rho equals one, which means they're fundamentally no randomness there at all, then would I have the same estimate? Otherwise, I'm going to get different estimates. So if I, if I want you to take away anything from this, it's basically that, you know, you should always try to do the map estimate if you can, but in cases where you don't know what the prior is, you can do the maximum likely estimate with the understanding that your error will be more than it could be if you had known the underlying distribution of x.